May it be so. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to sit back, take some deep breaths, center yourselves, and let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as Tracy shares this morning's prelude.
time in our service where we give of our tithes and offerings. One of my favorite things to do on Sunday mornings is to get here, come in here into this, our sacred space, leave the lights off, and let the sun, as it's rising, shine through the stained glass windows. And just sit. Sometimes, believe it or not, I can sit still. <laughs> Sometimes, 30 to 45 minutes, just taking it all in. And this morning, as I was sitting in here doing just that, I, I thought about all of the blessings that we have been given. Just the blessing of having this congregation in this community, in this time, is a blessing. Yeah. And so, thinking about all the things that God has given us, I invite you to discern what you're able to give today, whether that be time, talent, <coughs> energy, or money. And let's give back with grateful and cheerful hearts this morning.
I decided to come out and be my authentic self. And I was in a church and a denomination and serving in a church and a denomination that wasn't accepting of that at all. And I got letters often. I would leave my office where I was working in a skilled nursing facility and I would leave for the day and my car would have one, two, sometimes five or six notes stuck to it. Um, some of the most nasty, vile stuff that you've ever read. And it just got to the point where I just, I just hated going to my car every day. And one day I'm leaving the office and I get to my car and there are notes. This is after I'd already found a church home. I'd already found my way to the United Church of Christ that met at, on the campus of Clemson University. And so I was feeling pretty good. And then I walk out to my car and there are notes. So I took them off and by this point I'd gotten to where I wasn't even reading them anymore. But for some reason when I flipped, tore one off of the window, it opened up and I realized this one looks different. And I don't know if they had replaced the nasty notes that were there that day or if they just came and put notes, but they were from my new church home. And they were notes of appreciation. There were notes of love and acceptance. There were notes that gave me more strength than I think I would have ever have found anywhere else. Those letters made all the difference for me. And so you've probably received letters like that. The letter that Paul sent to the church at Rome likely had an effect like that on them. Because like many churches, they were facing their own challenges. They were facing issues within and without the church walls. And so they probably found themselves tired of doing the work that they had been called to do. And so Paul writes to them and he says, I so want to be there with you. And I hope to be one day. And one of the reasons he says that he wants to be there is so that they can be mutually encouraged by each other. Boy, don't we do that every week? Don't we mutually encourage each other? I know there are many things that I do throughout the week when I'm either at a community meeting or I'm doing other things out in the community, doing ministry beyond this campus and these walls. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have you mutually encouraging me to continue to do the work that God has called me to do. We have to continue to encourage each other mutually so that we can continue to do the work that we have been called to do. This morning, the community outreach ministry team met for their monthly meeting. And we have a lot of things going on. You hear a lot of announcements and you see them in the e-blast and different things like that. So I decided, you know, let me just make a list of the things that I know we as a church are involved in in this community. And I don't have the list in front of me. It will be in the e-blast this week. But I want to let you know it was two pages long of ways that this congregation is working in the community around us or inviting the community to come here with us. You will see as you read that list that this campus has become a community center. There is not a day of the week that one one or more building is not used on this campus by a community organization or a community group. We do that because we can mutually, and we do mutually encourage each other. Because life out there is hard. There are so many things that just bombard us each and every day and they can weigh us down. But we can come in here and we can all take a deep breath because we know that we are mutually encouraged. I can't wait to get up on Sunday mornings to come here so that we can all be together. And that's what Paul felt about the church at Rome. And he knew this about the church at Rome because he says in the letter, word about your work has spread far and wide. People are taking notice of the work that the church at Rome is doing and Paul is encouraging them, letting them know it's already gotten back to me. Word 
is spreading about Spring Hill United Church of Christ. The community around us and beyond knows about what is happening at Spring Hill United Church of Christ. And as long as we continue to remain faithful to what God has called us to do, that word will continue to spread. So thank you for that. Thank you for your willingness to do that. And the last thing that Paul says toward the end of this part of the letter to Rome is he tells them, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and its power to save. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel, the good news. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of it. I will teach it. I will preach it. I will risk comfort. I will risk safety. I am not ashamed to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Neither are you. You have boldly stepped forward in this community unashamed of the gospel, unashamed of sharing the good news. And here's the thing about the good news of the gospel. This is probably the greatest news of the gospel for me. It's not for a select few. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is for everyone, not just a chosen few people. And so what you have done as an open and affirming congregation is you have flung the church doors open wide and said the gospel is for all. Because sometimes what we have made the gospel is our gospel and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because here's the thing, if it's not good news for the poor, it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it's not good news for the outcast, it's not the good news of Jesus Christ. If it's not good news for the LGBTQIA community, it is not the good news of Christ. It is the good news that we as people have made it to be and not the good news of the gospel. And until that stops, we will always have the vision among us. And so Paul says, do not be ashamed. I shared with the community outreach ministry this morning a decision that I made that was a very difficult decision to make, and I, I feel like it was the appropriate one to make. But if you watch the news, the local news, any at all, you know what's happening in our schools. You know that there's a, there are bills being passed and under the guise of parental rights and education and, and gender identity, sexuality, those kind of things cannot be discussed. Books have been taken off of shelves. Teachers are afraid to have certain books on their shelves because they could actually be charged with a felony if they have certain titles on their shelves. We have, for the longest time, had a pride flag in the back of our sanctuary. Because for many people who come into these doors, they've never seen a church that is open and affirming, or a church that has a pride flag on the back wall. And I'm proud of that, that we have that here. We had the Spring Hill Elementary School concert here on Friday. I had to take it down. I made the choice to take it down because I didn't want to get the music teacher in trouble. If a parent happened to see that flag on the wall back there and reported it to school administration or the school board, all of a sudden, gender identity and sexuality is being discussed because of, an, of a place that she brought her students. How sad is that? How sad is that that we have to be concerned about that? The book drive that we've been doing, which by the way, today is the last day for you to donate to that. The book drive that we are doing and have been doing for years under the guidance of Marty Hodgkins and Sue Madsen and others. The books that we will be giving the students, giving students at Spring Hill Elementary School this year had to be vetted first before we could bring them. And not only that, but did I understand you right, Marty, that parents have to sign permission slips to be able to take a free book home that this church is going to be giving them? Now is not the time to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
we are to be boldly proclaiming that the gospel of Jesus Christ is for all, especially those on the margins. And I pray that we continue to have the strength to do what God has called us to do, because what we are doing is not only saving souls, as people like to say, we are actually saving lives by providing a brave space for everyone to come and experience the extravagant love and welcome of Christ. May it always be so. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you're able in body and our spirit for our communion hymn, Come Share the Lord. Yeah. 